Welcome and well met. It is I, the Quantset Manager. I've been looking at a number of topics and figured I needed to actually get into some background game mechanics in order to get some of the understanding of the rudimentary nature of the long dark out of the way. I'm starting off with sleeping, healing, and cabin fever. Mostly because it just popped into my head, but understanding how to sleep is actually a rather important part of the game. So, starting off, sleeping in the long dark is a fairly straightforward endeavor. Find somewhere you can sleep, then sleep. When you sleep, if you feel like temperature is above zero, and you have your hunger and thirst needs met, you heal. You heal slower the harder the game difficulty is, so I'll be speaking from the perspective of somebody in Interloper. No matter what your difficulty, if you play like it's Interloper, you can't go wrong. Now there's two groups of sleeping items, bedrolls, vehicles, and snow shelters in one grouping, with beds and bearskin bedrolls being in the second. The first group is a baseline, whereas the second group gives you a bonus to healing. Since you burn through thirst and hunger as you sleep in Interloper, there's a point where you eat up all your thirst and start to take damage while you're asleep. This means that after 10 hours, you start taking damage and actually don't heal as much, so it actually pays to only sleep 10 hours at a time in Interloper. It's a good habit to get into if you can. However, if you're playing on Stalker or lower, you can sleep the full 12 hours, and in that case, you heal a lot more. In Interloper, it's a 27% or 32%, depending on if you're sleeping in the first group or second group, for only 10 hours. And in stock air or easier, you heal 78% or 90% respectfully if you sleep the full 12 hours. There's only one other way to heal in the game. That's using an emergency stim. You gain a flat plus 15% condition, ignore all medical conditions, and max your stamina, which lasts for one minute. Usually you use that to run like hell away from whatever was about to kill you. However, there is an additional bonus. You become exhausted as soon as the stim wears off. Now, how exactly is that a bonus? Well, in Interloper, the ideal amount of sleep is 10 hours to maximize healing. Then you need to wait a pretty long time to sleep another 10 hours. If you sleep for 10 hours, immediately use a stim, you can then sleep another 10 hours as soon as the stim wears off. In Stalker, if you can sleep 12 hours in a normal bed or bearskin bedroll, you get a plus 90 to your condition, so normally that's not a very useful trick. But it's a very useful trick in Interloper when maximizing your recovery can be a matter of survival. To sum up, in Interloper, if you sleep 10 hours, use a stim, then sleep another 10 hours, in a normal bed, that is a total of plus 79% to your condition. Other important aspects of sleeping are the reduced caloric use. If you stick with minimal calories, just enough to heal back up to max, you can starve most of the day, then heal up the damage from starving by sleeping. The downside is, you do this long enough, your stamina condition will start to slowly fill in with red. When you are like this, you can sleep as much as you want, which means that you have to be very careful not to sleep so long you die. Players call this hibernation and use this state to pass a great deal of time in game. You can make it on as little as 600 calories a day this way, if you do it right. Most people just use this effect to save on water or food. Once your thirst or hunger redlines, you lose a flat amount of condition per hour. Two for losing all your thirst, and one for losing all hunger. Now, in this condition, it doesn't matter what else happens. For example, if your thirst is at zero, you could eat an entire block of salt and your condition loss will be completely unaffected. It's only an unusually low temperature conditions that you would lose additional condition. So people often starve all day, then eat at night, or might snack here or there just to keep the condition lost to a minimum and stagger it out over the day. And then at night they go to sleep, eat just enough calories to sleep for whatever they're planning, and heal up as much as they can and then repeat the next day. So your condition or your health constantly goes up and down, up and down, especially in interloper. If you're not willing to do that, chances are you're not going to survive. Now, why am I talking about healing and sleeping in a video that's primarily supposed to be about cabin fever? Because to get rid of cabin fever, you need to spend a great deal of time outside. There are many things that you have to do inside, but sleeping is not one of them. If you plan well, 
Sleeping outside is your primary defense against cabin fever. True, you can gather sticks or handle crafting or harvesting outside, but trust me, a great deal of your activities will be inside. So the most efficient way to get rid of cabin fever is to take a nap outdoors. With that out of the way, let's get into the meat of things. Cabin fever itself. The mechanic was created to drive people out of the buildings and prevent the very hibernation phenomenon I just described, where people could spend months without ever setting foot outside. At 600 calories a day, carefully managed, you could stay indoors for weeks on a single harvested deer. It works by keeping track of the last six days and how many hours you had spent outdoors. If the number of hours spent outdoors drops below a certain threshold, you start to get cabin fever. The exact mechanics are a little odd. Once you have it, you cannot sleep indoors for 24 hours. There's a grace period of 50 days on Voyager, 25 on Stalker, and none on Interloper. There's no risk of cabin fever ever on Pilgrim. Some locations are both outdoors and indoors, depending on the game mechanic. Uh, the best rule of thumb I have is that if a location has a fixed temperature, regardless of weather, it probably causes cabin fever. If the temperature is based on the weather outdoors, well, you can usually consider that place outdoors for the purpose of cabin fever, although there are exceptions. I will go into that later. Also, if it has a loading screen, chances are it causes cabin fever. Just FYI. How do we avoid this? Let's start with the worst and wake right way up. Flat open area. Dude, why bother? Too much wind from any direction and the fire goes out. The best bet you have is to use a bearskin bedroll in that situation. Frankly, it's not a good idea because you really don't want to get wet. You get wet, the water will cause ice to form up on your clothes, and you get frostbite. That's permanent loss to your max health. At least put your fire up against something to keep the wind from blowing out your fire from at least half of the possible directions. If you can find a corner or some sort of narrow area to put your fire in, that'd be even better, but... Windproof fire locations. There are some areas where a fire is simply immune to wind. A bolt like depression, for example. You might find some area where a lot of things are up against each other and you can wedge it in next to a car or a wall or something. There's a couple that you'll find if you skirt the world wall. In this area, you might find you're still in the wind even if you crouch down, but the fire might not be exposed to the wind. In this situation, you can keep warm without fear of the fire going out while you sleep. So, as long as you got enough wood, you can sleep. Do note that you don't actually get in your bedroll. Wherever you were last standing is where you are as far as the wind is concerned, and if the wind can reach you, well, the wind will slowly eat up your clothes. Especially if you're going to be sleeping there a long time. There are also fire barrels. These are exposed to wind but are completely unaffected by it. The fire barrels that I know of are scattered about. There are a number in uh, Pleasant Valley. There's one out behind the farmstead. There's one in a barn next to Three Strikes. And there's another behind the convenience store. On the Mountain Town map, there is only one. It's in the barn with the crafting table. In Forlorn Mesquite, there is one at the poacher's camp. The last one that I know about is in between the fence truck and the trailer at Hiberian Processing on Desolation Point. The problem with most fire barrels is that you have to be careful about avoiding the wind when using them and your clothes get torn up. Then again, if you need to spend time outdoors and you need a place where you can start a fire that it's not going to go out, well, as long as you get the fire hot enough so that it overcomes any drop in temperature, you should be okay. Side note, remember that outdoor fires take half as long to melt and boil water as indoor fires. So if you can't sleep, making a few dozen liters of water is never a bad thing and you're going to get more bang for your fuel buck outdoors. Another trick are the pipes. You might see them periodically in a couple of locations. Most pipes are blocked and you can't crawl in them, but there are a few that you can, like, for example, behind the Carter Hydro Dam. If you can't actually climb inside, you may be able to start a fire inside one. If you can do this without removing any material that blocks the entrance, because some of those pipes have wooden pallets in front of them that you can break down, if you can leave the wooden pallets in place, that'll provide another windbreak for your fire inside the pipe. That said, if you still have to break down the pallets to use a pipe or whatever, protection from, say, 320 degrees of wind is still better than none. Snow shelters. Snow shelters are good. Basically, they're igloos. Five cloth, 15 sticks, and you get yourself a boosted temperature that's a plus 14, and you can sleep in it without a bedroll. If you do use a bedroll, it adds to the ambient uh, feels-like temperature, and 
The ideal combo, of course, is a bearskin bedroll, which would give you a plus total of 26 to your apparent temperature. Snow shelters also allow you to still interact with outdoors. For example, you can light a fire from inside your snow shelter, or if you have a gun, you can shoot out of it. I don't believe you can use a bow from inside unless you've got Archery 5, which allows you to shoot while crouched. This is anecdotal, and it may have been an accident on my part, but once I was in one of these igloos, and I got hit by a snowstorm that hit me at just the right angle, and I actually believe it made my clothes get wet. Because I had just been, you know, say, ah, oh, I'm warm enough, I should be able to sleep like six hours, I got frostbite, because it iced up my clothes while I was sleeping in there. No idea how that happened. Only happened once. Maybe it was a glitch because this was a long time ago and maybe they fixed it with a patch, but I just wanted to mention it anyways. Try to put your igloo up against something or at least facing a wall because that way it provides just one more layer of windbreak to protect you. Moving on, we have caves. Caves are odd. The whole cave is considered outdoors, but parts are also kind of indoors. The mouth of a cave is outdoors, especially for the purposes of boiling water, but if you go to the back of the cave, that's not always the case. Some caves are only a plus 3 temperature, some caves are a plus 8, and I've actually bumped into a couple of plus 16s when it comes to the feels like temperature. As a side note, there's only two caves that have moss beds in them. The original Cassite Cave on the Mountain Town map, that, that's a rather shallow cave, not the best choice. But the other cave, which is a deep cave at the bottom of a ravine, that area you need a rope to get to, that moss bed only has a plus two temp bonus for sleeping in it. But if you can't find bedroll, which happens quite a bit on Interloper, well, sometimes you just gotta make do with what you got. Me personally, my favorite cave, that'd be the cave closest to Mystery Lake on the ravine map. Frankly, it's one of the warmer caves. There's no wolves anywhere on the ravine map. The weather tends to be somewhat mild. It's got bunnies, deer, cattails, a little bit of loot, and it's a short sprint to the Hydro Dam's gate when I need to get my crafting on, so just my little personal recommendation there. But moving on, we've got outdoor buildings. Now what I define an outdoor building is, is our buildings exposed to the weather. The outside office at the maintenance yard, for example, on the broken railroad map. It has a bed. It's got some bonuses to heat, but it's still a lousy place to be when the temperature drops to negative 41. The stone church on the Desolation Point map is another example. However, there's a few indoor-outdoor buildings that don't count. For example, the Mountaineer's Hut on Timberwolf Mountain, it counts as indoors and causes cabin fever. This is the strangest building ever because it causes cabin fever but yet the temperature is entirely dependent on the outdoor weather. Also, there's the back porch to the farmstead on the Pleasant Valley map. This is also an indoor-outdoor location, but unlike the Mountaineer's Hut, this has a fixed temperature regardless of the weather. So, I'm afraid it takes some experience to pin down exactly what is what, so you should always test the location just to be sure. There's also something to note is every once in a while you come across a destroyed building. It looks like it's been basically burned down the middle. Always check them out because these often come by with potbelly stoves. For example, there's one next to the abandoned Prepper Cache in uh, Pleasant Valley. There's the Hermit Cabin down in the valley of Mountain Town. And also, I believe there's one next to Deadfall in Mystery Lake. Now, since we're talking about outdoor buildings, you might be saying, hey, what about barns? Well, technically the wind can still get into most of them. Some of them have objects outside or piles of snow that cover up the holes, but those little slats, those aren't just for show. You can actually shoot arrows through some of them. Make sure to test it first before you decide to lure a moose over and then try to snipe it from inside a barn. That all said, there is one little trick which I've mentioned in the first video in my series. If you have a barn where the snow piled up inside deep enough that you have to crouch to move down the round inside, get into that little under area, crouch down, Drop your bedroll, sleep an hour, pick it up, quit, and then restart your game. If you do that, your bedroll will be on the ground where you put it, but you will appear in the upper loft area, which I believe is completely windproof. Or at least every time I've been up there, I haven't been exposed to wind. Uh, your individual experience may vary. Moving on, we come to cars. Cars are a great modest boost to temperature. 
and you can sleep in them without a bedroll. The problem is, is there's no place to put a fire that won't get knocked out by changing winds for 99% of the cars. Still, if you sleep in two to three hour shifts, you should be able to survive a night like this. Cars are actually better for spending time mending clothing, harvesting cloth, or any other mundane activity that you can take care of by walking around as opposed to needing a crafting table. Sleeping in one shouldn't be your first choice, but it isn't a bad one. For example, there's a truck right behind the Quonset garage that I do all my crafting harvesting in. And, well, it's not a bad place to catch a quick nap now and again, but I don't spend a great deal of time in it. Where do I spend a great deal of time? Well, that brings us to fishing huts. Fishing huts are great. They shelter from the wind, they provide a minor temperature boost, they have shelves and storage and a pot belly stove. Most importantly, they are the only place you can fish. Not all fishing huts are spawned equally. Some come with the door. As long as the wolves or bears aren't already charging, just close the door and the AI can no longer path to you. Close the door after bear is already charging and you get to watch a bear run straight through a wall and beat your ass. Still, you get to generate food and fuel oil all the while blowing off cabin fever. It's an excellent choice and the preferred one for most players in the long dark. My personal preferred combo is the hut right outside the fishing village on Coastal Highway. There's mucho wood, crafting table, warm beds, and when I need to get away from it all, a short trip to the fishing village does it for me. I should also mention that there is a single fishing hut that is on the Pleasant Valley map. I've heard that it sometimes spawns a door, and if you are very, very lucky, you might get one of the random prepper caches to spawn next to it. Highly rare, but it's an amazing combo when the stars align to make it happen. And then we have the last method to blow off cabin fever. I'm the kind of guy who likes to roam around. This last way is exactly the way that the game designers intended for you to get rid of cabin fever. Just keep moving. Sleep inside, then spend the rest of your day outside, gathering sticks, moving from place to place. Even if your clothing is lousy, spend a few minutes outside, then jump back in as soon as you can to prevent freezing to death. Every little bit counts, although actually sleeping outside seems to get rid of cabin fever faster than walking around. Still, the best way to avoid cabin fever is to indulge that wanderlust. But what to do if you actually get cabin fever? Well, you found yourself screwed. You simply couldn't get outside. There's too many wolves. The storm was too intense. What do you do? Well, with luck, you have been paying attention to what percentage you are at. Once you get around 90%, you basically have to make a choice. Get outside and stay outside no matter what, or get cabin fever. If you've resolved to get cabin fever, go to bed immediately. Seriously, maximum time allowed. You need to sleep as much as you can because you are not going to get a second chance. Once you start sleeping, it won't wake you up until you've maxed out your stamina. But once you do wake up, you will then need to spend 24 hours outside. You can still go inside, it's just every moment spent inside is a moment wasted trying to get rid of cabin fever. So once you have it, it's basically the same procedure as trying to prevent cabin fever. Except now you've got no wiggle room. You must spend 24 hours outside. Time for power leveling your fishing skill, I imagine. This concludes the video on cabin fever, sleeping, and healing. I hope this helps you to survive long enough to come down to the Quonset garage and get some supplies. Heck, you can even go use my preferred fishing hut. Just ignore the half ton of rotting fish. For some reason, I just can't bring myself to throw anything out. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.